Now uh, we have to discuss this intracellular non proteins that recognize bacterial degradation products in the cytoplasm. And in the last lecture, I just, you know, I was telling you something about the NOD receptors. Previously, we uh, studied about other receptors that recognize different, uh, you know, uh, ligands. Now, the NOD ligand structures, particularly for bacterial degradation products, because when these bacteria that you see here in the red are taken up by the macrophages, then the macrophages degrade this bacterium into different types of, you know, products. This can be uh, different polypeptides or lipids or carbohydrates, etc., uh, that result from the degradation of uh, the bacteria here. Okay. Now, what happens that uh, you know certain products, certain degradation products. Uh, of the bacterium could be recognized by some receptors that are inside the cell, are inside the macrophage. So inside the macrophage, I told you that uh, different kinds of bacterial products, just like uh, muramel dipeptide, which is part of most of the bacterial cell walls, you know, is recognized by the nod like receptor or NOD2, not like two receptors, you know. Not like one and not like two receptors, you can see here they have a similar structure and there are three domains. One is the amino domain, the other one is the carboxy domain on the carboxy side and one is the central domain which is known as NOD are the uh, nucleotide oligomerization domain because this domain is responsible for oligo making oligomers. So the amino domain, this particular domain, it has a binding site for this enzyme which is known as RIPK2, receptor interacting serine-threonine protein kinase. So this is uh, phosphatase, this is name indicates that this enzyme would do phosphorylation, okay. And this enzyme, or RIPK2, again has a site which is known as CARD, the caspase recruitment domain. Caspases are enzymes that, proteolytic enzymes that are present inside the cells in inactive form usually. We call them pro-caspases. And you would have studied about the role of caspases in apoptosis, for instance, you know. So these caspases, they are, uh, you know, um, recruited with the help of certain domains which are present in certain peptides, including the RIPK. Two domains, okay, but in the nod-like receptors, this card domain is not used by the nod receptors. Either nod one or two, both of these receptors are not using their card to capture caspases, spaces. Okay, they are using this card domain for another purpose. In that purpose, we will just come to now here. I told you that COD not only can catch, capture case spaces, but they can also, uh, you know, bind with other proteins that have the same CODs, okay? For instance, this is one protein, the nod like two protein, and this is RIPK2, which is another protein that we are talking about here. So RIPK2, it has a COD domain, you know? And the nod like receptor also has a card domain. So the card domains of two peptides join together and they join different peptides together. Okay. So for making assembly of different proteins, these cards are also used inside the cells. Okay. So the story 
So just begin here, the bacterium entered here. This is a phagolysosome. The bacteria in red here has been lysed into different, you know, products. And these degradation products are now here inside the cell to be recognized by receptors that are present inside the cell, in the cytoplasm. One of them is not two. Another would be not one. Others would be the receptors that we have already talked about, just like, uh, you know, different toll-like receptors, signaling receptors that we talked about, TLR3 or TLR9, etc. All these receptors are present in the cytoplasm. Now, as I told you that this is a singular not like receptor, not two receptor. And this not two receptor also has these three different domains that we are talking about. The amino domain is here, okay? And as I told you that uh, the amino domain, it attaches with RIPK2, okay? While this part, card, okay? So uh, this is uh, the caspase recruitment domain. So the caspase recruitment domain or card would be right here. This is the caspase recruitment domain. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> there is a carboxy domain. The carboxy domain is right here, and the carboxy domain is used by these receptors to bind with the pathogen or the, you know, the ligand that we are talking about. For instance, in this case, this is miramyl dipeptide, which is found in the cell walls of bacteria. When the bacteria is broken, this peptide is released, then it binds with the nod like receptors at the carboxy domain here that you can see. And when uh, it binds to the nod like receptor binds to the antigen, then what happens next? This is dimerization of the receptors that would take place, you know. I told you the receptors never work alone. Receptors always make dimers. So this would be dimerized here. And when this is dimerized here, this protein, RIPK2, also is activated. And the card domain are of this protein binds with the card domains of the tall like uh, of the not two like receptors, okay? Now what happens that this would bring about, you know, activation of this particular kinase, RIPK2, which is going to phosphorylate another, uh, you know, kinase, which is known as TAK1. And this TAK1 is going to act upon this assembly. This is IKK, okay? And you know about IKK, in the previous slide I had, uh, previous lecture I had told you about IKK, that IKK, once phosphorylated, is going to act upon IKB, uh, kappa beta, inhibitor of kappa beta kinase, is going to act upon this because the necrosis factor kappa beta is here bound to IKB, okay? So this should be released. The necrosis factor kappa beta, this one is a transcription factor. And this transcription factor can be, uh, you know, it can work, it can be translocated into the nucleus only if it is a law, not a part of, uh, you know, uh, combined with I kappa beta, okay? So, once IKK is phosphorylated, this phosphorylated IKK is going to act upon this assembly and this associate IK uh, kappa beta from the necrosis factor kappa beta. Now this is a lawn now, it can go inside the nucleus and start transcription of the genes responsible for causing inflammation, okay? So in the previous slide, you saw that a cascade of events started right at the surface of the macrophage with the help of tall-like receptors that recognized what? 
that recognize bacteria, bacterial infection, the macrophages have got these star like receptors to recognize bacteria on their surfaces, okay, and to send the signals to, uh, you know, the nucleus in the form of uh, this NF kappa beta to start the transcription of genes responsible for inflammation. In here, we are talking about these bacterial products when the bacteria is internalized by the macrophage and there are different products that are made here. Internal or cytoplasmic receptors can also complement the role of the tall like receptors to tell the nuclear genes to start expression, you know, of cytokine genes for the, uh, you know, initiation of the process of inflammation. So if the pathogen is outside the cell or if the pathogen is inside the cell in the form of a virus or some products of bacteria that are degraded inside the cell, all these are helping, uh, you know, with this process or all this signaling that is taking place is ultimately leading to the transcription of genes inside the nucleus and those genes which are responsible for the process of inflammation because the inflammatory process is needed there.